Okay, let's finish up chapter 42, the circulatory and respiratory system. So, blood, part of, important part of the circulatory system, this, this liquid that flows around through our heart and our arteries and our veins and into the capillary bed, beds, what does it consist of? Well, there's a liquid component, the plasma, and a cellular component. The cellular component, as you probably know, has the red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. The red cells, otherwise known as the erythrocytes, that's the majority of the cells in your blood. Then the leukocytes, a family of white blood cells, um, many fewer of them, but very important, of course, with immunity and fighting off pathogens. And then the platelets involved with blood clotting. Of course, those erythrocytes are important for the transport of gases, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. So the plasma mostly consists of water, which of course is the solvent for carrying all of these different ions, these particular nutrients that we have to carry around. Um, a lot of proteins, um, things like fibrinogen, which is involved with blood clotting, for example, and certain antibodies with your immune system. Then there's nutrients like glucose, um, and certain metabolic wastes. Um, there's also some CO2 and oxygen dissolved in the liquid, although again, a lot of it is carried by the red blood cells. And of course, with the endocrine system, the circulatory system is an important way for your hormones to spread around your body. And so, transition into the respiratory system. So, these two systems interact in that the respiratory system is that which gets oxygen out of the air and then into the circulatory system and it's also the conduit by which CO2 comes from the metabolic processes of your cells into the circulatory system then into your respiratory system and out of the organism um, and this respiratory system can take various forms it can be say the gills of a fish um, but of course in us it's our lungs and so your respiratory system, of course, begins up in the nasal cavity in the mouth, into the back of the throat, and then down the trachea, um, to the bronchi, and then the bronchioles, and finally ending at the bronchioles in the alveoli, these sacs, the, the cul-de-sacs of the lung, you might say. So you breathe in, and air flows through the system into those alveoli, and that air will be rich in oxygen. It diffuses into the blood. And the blood that's coming from your body um, that's rich in CO2 will give up CO2 to that air. And so then you breathe out. And that air is richer in CO2 and has less oxygen than when it came into your body. That oxygen-rich blood will then flow through these veins that work themselves back to the pulmonary veins and to the heart. How do you breathe? Well, there's this large muscle called the diaphragm that's uh, just underneath your lungs. And you also have the muscles of your rib cage. And so what happens is the rib cage expands, the diaphragm moves down, and this creates negative pressure inside your lungs that draws in air. Air is pulled into your lungs. So that's inhalation. So when you exhale, the diaphragm relaxes and moves up and pushes against your lungs. The rib cage relaxes and contracts. And so then that pushes air out of your lungs. So air is pulled in during inhalation and pushed out during exhalation. Now, homeostasis. What's going on here? Well, when you um, do cellular respiration in your, your lung, in your cells, and produce CO2. This gets into your blood. And what happens is, as we'll see in a moment, how exactly this happens, but that lowers the pH of your blood. And this decreased pH of your blood, which is normally about 7.4, but when it starts to get lower, that means there's more CO2 inside your uh, bloodstream. Um, say when you're exercising vigorously, you're going to start respiring more and producing more CO2. So this decrease in pH is a signal 
that you need to get more oxygen to your cells and get that CO2 out faster. And so what is what happens? Well, this essentially stimulates, there's a, basically a, in your uh, base of your brain, you have areas that monitor this pH of your blood. And so when it starts to get a little too acidic, what happens? Your heart speeds up, your breathing increases, and with, again, the goal of getting more oxygen in your system, moving it around quicker, and getting that CO2 out faster to keep that pH of your blood from getting too low. So the goal is to maintain a relatively stable pH and to also make sure your cells have all the oxygen they need. So what happens is, so here, if we look at the air outside of you, it's very rich in oxygen and not a whole lot of CO2. Um, you essentially breathe that air in. Okay, again, it's inside those alveoli, those cul-de-sacs of the lung. Again, you've got lots of oxygen there. And you can see that the blood that's coming into the alveoli is relatively low in oxygen and rich in CO2. So that creates a situation where oxygen is going to diffuse into the blood and CO2 is going to diffuse out. So that as that blood leaves the lung in those pulmonary veins, it's going to be relatively rich in oxygen and much less CO2. All right, back to the heart through systemic flow to all those capillary beds. And here again, those tissues are using up uh, oxygen and cellular respiration, so they have less of it than the blood that's entering. So there's going to be diffusion of oxygen out, CO2 in, so that by the time the blood leaves the capillary beds, it has a lot less oxygen and a bit more CO2. That, of course, then goes back to the lungs and just completes the cycle and over and over again. So it's just using, we take advantage of the different amounts, the different concentrations of these gases to allow diffusion to move them where we need them to go, inside our lungs and inside our capillary beds. And so, um, again, this difference in concentration allows for oxygen to leave the blood and goes to your cells. And when your cells are at rest, um, only a certain amount of the oxygen in your blood is extracted because the demand is not nearly as high. But what you can see is that as activity level increases, you're exercising, your cells, the demand for oxygen increases, and so you're going to extract more of the available oxygen out of that blood. Um, and so um, essentially, the tissues at rest will have a certain concentration of oxygen but when you're exercising that concentration goes down which means you're going to extract more oxygen out of your blood and again as we saw the pH of your blood drops when you're being more active because of that excess CO2 and when your blood is more um, acidic um, it actually allows for greater diffusion of oxygen into those cells as well. Now why does the blood become acidic when you're exercising? Well what happens, so your cells are producing that CO2 and that CO2 is transferred into the blood in those capillary beds both in the plasma and also into the cells themselves. Well what happens is the CO2 interacts with water to produce carbonic acid. That carbonic acid will have a tendency to dissociate and release a hydrogen ion. And so this is going to end up producing some hydronium and decreasing that pH. Um, so now in the lungs, what happens is you have the opposite happening. You have the carbonic acid broken down into its basic water and CO2 and that CO2 is then released into the alveoli and then out of the lungs. <coughs> so it's that carbonic acid that's produced that lowers the blood pH. Okay, that's it for chapter 42.